to schedule them a little bit. You are witnessing the beginning of a road trip. This ain't a hybrid, is it? Undertaken by two of the strangest political bedfellows imaginable. Greg Smith is a retired police chief and construction worker from rural Southwest Ohio. He's a devout evangelical and an ardent Trump supporter. I really believe in his values. I really believe that uh, he loves this country. He messes up, but so do I. If I was president, I'd probably be just like him. What time is your music class, by the way, tomorrow? Two. Kuyar Mostafshi lives just a few miles away in suburban Dayton, but he might as well be on another planet. He immigrated from Iran and now works as a computer engineer and is an active member of the local Democratic Party. After the election, I was devastated. I was ready to cut every Republican out of my life. These two men with seemingly irreconcilable differences became friends through a group called Better Angels, which brings together reds and blues with the goal of, quote, depolarizing America. Hillary for president! <laughs> Donald Trump! <laughs> Political polarization, or tribalism, has reached a fever pitch in America. Divisions between red and blue are more stark than ever. It's not just polite disagreement. Nearly half of Republicans and Democrats see the opposing party as a threat to the nation's well-being. No matter what topic you pick now, you're going to get this horrible tribal conflict over it that prevents anything productive from happening. David Blankenhorn is the founder and president of Better Angels. Even before the 2016 election, it seemed clear that this was really cancer. The group's appeal to national unity immediately rang true for both Greg and Kuyar when they met at their first Better Angels gathering. When you get past the stereotype part of everything, You've got it beat. You got it beat. To me, it was nice to also see his other side of, you know, compassion and the fact that he wants to listen to me and learn about my background. They ended up visiting one another's places of worship, and the friendship just grew from there. And on this day, they are traveling together from Ohio to Virginia. You probably want to make a left. To attend the first ever Better Angels National Convention. Both sides think they're being attacked by the other side. You say you care about the going on, and you hate the argument, you hate the bitter and all that kind of stuff, but what are you going to do about it? In the car, weighty issues are hashed out. They agree to disagree on abortion, but they do find common ground on guns. The whole point about training, the whole point yes. about accountability yes. for people that own firearms. Yes. I mean, that is a no-brainer. Where yeah. should we park? You can park anywhere. They arrive in Harrisonburg, Virginia, where they meet up with other political odd couples from across the country. I want to hear people who aren't like me. I, I wanted to hear their stories and understand um, why they, they vote the way they do. I actually have felt polarization a lot within my family. I guess that's kind of where it started. Because of the polarization, we are finding ourselves in more and more isolation. Anthony Ginger is the president of the Young Democrats at Graceland University in Iowa, and his roommate, Christian Sarabia, runs the campus Republican group. Your roommates, even though you basically agree on nothing politically? Correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we believe our opinion strongly. However, we understand there are perspectives other than ours. What practical pieces of advice could you give to anybody watching about how to have constructive relationships with people with whom you disagree I deeply? Evaluate yourself. You have to want to open yourself up to new ideas, new beliefs, um, not necessarily to want to persuade um, the other person. If any of us are here with the idea that in three hours or seven hours, we're going to get these people to change their mind, it's not going to go well. The Better Angels have a strict format designed to keep things civil. David, you have somebody? And it was designed by this man, a marriage counselor named Bill Doherty. You had a long history of working with couples yes. on the precipice of divorce in some cases. Yeah, yeah. Did this strike you as harder or easier than that? Oh, harder. These were strangers, and strangers from different tribes. And those tribes have been at war. Your job is to listen and learn how people in this group perceive this issue. Here's how a Better Angels meeting works. The Reds or the Blues, whichever group is going first. So we should be willing to serve other people. In this case, it's the Blues. Gather in the center with the Reds observing on the outside. The idea was to create a process in which there was uh, little chance 
that people would get reactive to each other and escalate. Where do you stand on this LGBT rights, religious liberty issue, and why? Uh, five years ago, my son came out, and uh, I, I was nothing but supportive of him, but still it made me stop and think about things a little bit. 2013, I had a non-legal wedding, and we went to a hotel, and we were refused service. Then the Reds go while the Blues listen. I see, uh, you know, I see marriage as, as something that's between a man and a woman. For the purpose of having children, so that the children have parents that will pass on the values of society. Very few of us get a chance to hear a group of like-minded people talk among themselves. They're not arguing with anybody. After the fishbowl, it's direct one-on-one -on -one conversations between the two sides. The experience that the uh, one woman gave about not being allowed to check at your hotel is just obviously completely un unacceptable in every possible way. Again, the end goal here is not to change minds, but to reach what the Better Angels call accurate disagreement, which can lead to mutual understanding. The end goal is humanizing one another despite our political differences. Humanizing, not getting people to, you know, change their moral compass or something like no, that. No, no. Let me ask just about this exercise that we've just seen. H how did it go for the two of you? These are deeply held beliefs on both sides, and we've got to talk about them, even if it feels hard. So hard but worth doing? Yeah. Actually, maybe hard but must do. Absolutely. So what are the takeaways for those of us who struggle to talk politics with friends, family, or colleagues? One, it's worth repeating this, don't try to change anybody's mind. If you enter into this and they sense your goal is to show them how stupid they are with their perspective, they're going to put their defenses up. Two, make I statements rather than truth statements. So I am, for example, really concerned about climate change and what's going to happen to my grandchildren and great-grandchildren's generation. And three, don't characterize the other side's opinion, just characterize your own. So don't say, you guys want to just grow government. That would be a red saying to blue. Don't say a blue to a red. You know, your side just wants to, um, you know, let, let people die on the street. Better Angels is only 18 months old with 3,100 members across the country, and they say they are growing and scalable. The common thing people tell us is, I have been waiting for something like this, and wa I've wanted something like this. Wait no more. Better Angels is open for business and looking to get more conversations started before it's too late. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.